I haven't read a single comment where someone says that they don't like the BYD Seagull because uh, basically it's brilliant, and that loads of people have been saying uh, in the comments uh, that they would definitely buy one immediately if they could. I'm one of those people. So uh, after doing some research, you, you can, you know, there are ways you could buy a right hand drive one uh, from countries uh, and import one. So that's just one part of the, you know, what I wanted to talk about today. And uh, the other one is, this is Mimi, he's the neighbour's cat. Some people comment and say, is he really the neighbour's cat? He's in every in one of your videos. He may not be the neighbour's cat anymore, I don't know. Uh, also, this, for the people that ask, is the All Powers R600. That's the box in the back of every one of my videos. If you're new to the video, uh, the channel, I'm Ben Alexander and I make EV news videos uh, almost every day. To begin with, if you want a BYD Seagull, it's easier to buy one in China as a foreign person, but to register it in China is an issue. But you can buy one and then take it out of China if you live in a country that has the same side of the steering wheel and, and whatnot. So the rules in your country will apply, of course. So in the UK, I think you're allowed to drive a left hand drive car in the UK and register it. But I don't think you can do that in Australia unless it's a classic. I'm not so sure. So you'll have to do your own research on that. However, the BYD Seagull is about to go into production uh, with right hand drive which suggests two things. Number one, it's going to be available in the countries that drive on the left of the road. And two, it's probably coming to Australia within two years, or possibly, at least possibly, I think probably, possibly at this point. So the issue is whether BYD can physically make these because uh, this is where it gets tricky. They've already delivered 200,000 of them uh, over 200,000 of them in China alone since it was introduced at the beginning of 2023. Can they make a meaningful amount for export? I think that's the big issue. So if you can't wait, then here are some countries that keep that you should keep an eye on to see if you're able to get a BYD Seagull in right-hand drive format and then export it, unless you just want to get one exported from China in left-hand drive now. If you didn't know, Luke Todd is the bloke that started the company EV Direct. Uh, the company that uh, was started in Australia to import BYD cars to Australia. He's already sold 90% of the company to another company in Australia, a really, really big company called Eagers, and that was a $70 million deal. And uh, the company that runs huge car showrooms in Australia, that's Eagers. So uh, Luke is a very rich guy now, obviously. So obviously this is all about money for you know EV Direct and Eagers and whatnot. Uh, it's not just about e, e, you know BYD just trying to innocently come to Australia and sell their things. There's also you know middle people trying to get their share of the pie, you know. And BYD are not far from selling more cars than Tesla in Australia, which is awesome, uh, due to the fact that they are simply more affordable, I think, than you know than Teslas for the masses. Uh, and they're also obviously different, and they look really, really good. And I, some people think they look better than Tesla. Uh, you know, maybe you're one of those people. I don't know. Also, there are 600,000 migrants from China now living in Australia, which is a lot more than 10 years ago. Or is it, is it 2011? I put it on the screen now. It was like 300,000 then. Uh, so anybody who lives around Brisbane will know that almost all of the people that drive a BYD Eto3 seem to be Chinese people which figures because uh, if I was able to buy a well-made British car uh, in Australia, I would be keen to have one to help me not feel maybe homesick. And especially if that British made car was as good as a BYD and it just ticked as many boxes as a BYD, that would be really, really cool. So I'd just buy one. So Luke Todd was saying recently, the Seagull has been certainly a popular vehicle since being released. And we've had uh, discussions recently about bringing the Seagull to Australia, but it hasn't been confirmed just yet. That's what he said. Those are the words. Officially, it's not coming, but it is a vehicle that down the track we'd like to see come here after the new ute. That's close, isn't it? That doesn't sound so bad to me. So there it is. It sounds like it is on the cards, but remember that the only one you should buy is the most expensive version. Uh, you know, it's like 1700 US dollars if you convert the currency at the minute for, you know, Chinese prices. That's the one with liquid cooling on the batteries and the bigger battery. Any of the others don't have liquid cooling, 
forget them. They're worthless, I think, in my opinion, especially in Australia. The heat will just cook the batteries. Just don't do it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, or you disagree, then please just Google how many Nissan Leafs are on the market right now for sale with, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 kilometers with uh, a battery that's broken or, you know, maybe 60% of its original capacity because it has passive cooling, which is basically nothing when you park it on a hot spot on the ground and the heat just goes up into the battery all day and just cooks it. So that's, that's what passive cooling is. It's not something you're getting that's going to do you any good. So I don't know for sure, but I imagine one of the big considerations for BYD and uh, local importers is that they can sell a cheap car for a cheap price, like the BYD Seagull, but it requires very similar amounts of infrastructure to serve it up to the local public wherever they're selling it. So they take up similar amounts of space on ships as cars that cost three times the price, etc. Um, you know, the same space in shipping yards and so on. So I reckon this is largely why they aren't so keen to do this. As a company that exports its vehicles, it will likely hurt their sales or profit margins to some degree. It is true they could bring them to Australia, sell loads of them, you know, that's not in question. It's just not in their, you know, best interest as a business, I don't think. Maybe. What do you all think about the BYD Seagull? Do you think it would be a good car for Australia and um, I imagine if you're in Europe on the continent or in the UK, I would say it would be amazing, especially the UK, amazing. Uh, do you think it has the range to do what you want it to do or not? Either way, let me know in the comments if you don't think it would suit or why you don't think it would suit or if you do. Um, I know people might say that it's not really, you know, for anything other than city driving, but I disagree. Um, a lot of people buy affordable cars that are, g are good for various tasks, uh, you know, not necessarily for long cruises on the motorway. You know, the last couple of my cars that I had that were petrol uh, that I bought were the Honda Jazz, which generally is called a city car, but it was it's perfectly fine to sit, you know, on the motorway and cruise around for six days on long drives across the east coast of Australia from Brisbane down to Victoria. Perfectly comfortable, perfectly fine. Uh, so I think, you know, maybe you might think the Dolphin, uh, the BYD Dolphin or the BYD Seagull would be less refined or comfy if you're used to a Toyota Prius, which is very comfy, but it's still good enough. It's still a modern swanky car that you've just paid, you know, 20 grand for in Australia if you were to do that. So I don't think there's a concern with that, uh, but probably not as good as a BYD Seagull if you were to, say, do 400 kilometers A to B what you know which one's best to be in granted but you've just paid probably a third or a fourth of the money for it so that's a good thing so i'll be very keen to see what happens with the seagull and one thing is for sure if they import it to europe or australia i will place an order on the day it gets released i will 